Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in the previous video, I went over figuring out the number of parallel plots you can do based on your system hardware. So for me, it was three plots. And then from there, I went over some advice or things to consider when purchasing an SSD to start parallel plotting. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over the number of minutes and delay you should stagger your plots, meaning after you start your first plot, how long should you wait before starting the next plot and the plot after that when plotting in parallel? Now, why do you want to stagger your plots in the first place? Well, it's really to avoid bottlenecks. Now, if we go to Chia Plotting Basics, we can see that the threading is only used in phase one currently. So this right here, number of threads, this is only used in phase one. And then after that, um, only one thread is being used for the other phases. And we'll see that we're avoiding other bottlenecks as well later on in the video. So you kind of want to stagger these plots so that phase one doesn't run at the same time, you know, for all the plots. So if you just run them all at the same time, well, your CPU is going to be hit really hard for about, you know, however long phase one takes, and then not very hard for the rest of the time. So if you space them out of when you start them, well, your CPU can be best optimized or utilized, you know, for the phase one threading. Now, how do you find this little magic number of what the delay should be between plot creation? Well, to be honest, you're going to have to create at least a couple of plots to get an ideal, and then you're going to have to review the logs to see how long phase one took. So if you go to the folder where these uh, logs are kept, and you, you probably shouldn't delete these logs. Now, the folder is in users, your username, .chia, mainnet, plotter. So if you open one of these up, you can kind of see how long each phase took. So this right here says the starting phase one out of four. But so if we scroll all the way down to when this phase ends, it will give us the time of how long this phase took. So it's after table seven. So right here it says time for phase one, you know, this many seconds. How many seconds is that? Like 10,000 seconds. And then you can divide that by 60, of course. So let's go ahead and just divide that by 60. And here we can see that it took 166 minutes. Now this is just for a single plot, you know, and you might want to get an average of maybe two or three plots to get, you know, a good number. Well, I also made a tool to kind of parse these logs for you to make it much easier. So if you open up PowerShell, and you're going to want to install the, the module called PS Chia Plotter. So you can do that by doing install module, uh, do repository, PS Gallery, and then do name PS Chia Plotter. Now I already have this installed, um, so I already have the commandlets in my system, but this is what you would do to get the same commandlets I'm about to run. So it's called git chia plot statistics, plotting statistics, and then I'm just going to select the first one so we can take a look at the type of information this gets us. So it really just parses out the important information that we need from that log file without having to go through it. So, you know, it tells us the case size, mine was 32. This one I decided to test, you know, adding maybe double the RAM to see if that helps, and it gives us the number of threads I was using and then how long phase one took. So it took 2.82 hours. So you would just times that by 60 to get the number of minutes. So 2.82 times 60. So in this case, I would wanna add 169 minutes um, to this value right here. So maybe like 170. All right, but I've plotted quite a bit of plots, so maybe we should get all of them. So if we get all of them, you can see that, you know, this would take forever to gather, you know, individually, but it just gathers them automatically. Now, how can we get the average? Well, we can pipe this to something called measure object, and then we're going to want to measure the average of the property, and the property is actually a different name than this. This is just to give it a nice view. So the property is actually called phase uh, underscore one underscore SEC for seconds and then here we can get the average for all of these plots and so the average is 9,726 so if we divide that 
by 60 because this is showing seconds whereas this is just showing hours or minutes we get 162 minutes so that's probably what we're going to want to aim at at 162 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and do that so in the in the uh, videos after this I'm going to be doing this in the command line but for the sake of just really uh, focusing on one aspect I'm going to do this in the GUI so I'm just going to add 162 to my minute delays I'm going to leave everything as default if you want to change this back to 2 somehow that got to 3 I'm going to select my temporary directory which is now my Evo plus this is the first time I'm using it now I just like to have a folder it's really not necessary but I do like it and then here we're going to choose my new Seagate and then Mr. Pig and then farm so now you know we're going to oop, and we're going to choose three uh, plot so we're going to plot three in parallel and we're going to wait 162 minutes before starting each plot so if we do create plot here we got plotting and then these two are queued so this first plot has already started and like a timer has been created for 162 minutes and when it, that has been done this plot will start and then after another 162 minutes this third plot will start being created and then after this one has been created then this will be completed and then we can look at the logs to see if we're getting a better average of plot creation um, plotting in parallel versus the times I was plotting sequentially or in a queue okay so my three parallel plots have finished and I did start another one right here so we can just ignore that one so what we want to figure out is just how long it took to plot all three parallel plots so we can find this out by going back to the log files and we'll skip this one right here because this is the one I just started and we'll want to look at these three parallel plots now what we want to do is add in column called date created and this will show us this property so what we're going to do is take the the time when the first plot was started and take it to when the last plot finished so the first plot started at 11 16 p.m. on 4 27 and the last plot finished at 4 or at 10 26 a.m. the following morning now this is less than 12 hours so if we just quickly do math here you know we can say that each plot took less than four hours now I've never plotted any any plots in less than four hours so we can already see that this is a lot more efficient however we can we also know that this isn't the most optimized why is that well the first plot finished at 5 a.m. so after that one finished well I only have two plots in parallel and my CPU is not being fully utilized and then again at 8 a.m. my second plot finished so now we just have one plot going and it um, so we, when we could have another two already started so this time could be even further reduced now I didn't want to get the pretty much the exact time so I jumped into PowerShell and grabbed these plot files and I got the last write time for the last plot file and the creation time for the first plot file and I subtracted them and I got 11 hours divide that by three and it's actually three hours point six six um, hours to plot each one which is incredible and we know that it would actually be even lower if we uh, had three going constantly now let's go ahead and actually look at each phase and how long each phase took for these so I'm going to do uh, get chia plotting statistics and then I'm actually going to sort these by um, time started descending and I'm going to grab the first four Let, yeah let's grab the first five so here we can see the plot that I've started it doesn't have these filled out because it hasn't finished anything now here we can see that um, this is the first plot that I started and it, it took about two hours and uh, 37 or 2.37 hours and then we can see that these other plots they really didn't diminish that much even though we are plotting them in parallel and the same with these so this is a plot that was just by itself and it did take a little bit less time in phase one but notice that I used four threads and double the RAM so we do expect it to be a little bit better but it's really not that much better whenever you're doubling the threads sometimes and then these are all you know pretty much the same and you can kind of see that whenever these two plots finish up or well, this third plot has better times for phase three and even phase four 
but it really doesn't affect it that much, you know, so it, it is better to start another plot immediately after one is finished. So I'm going to let this plot finish because this is going to be the first plot that I plotted by itself on my new Samsung Evo, and so I did want to get just a an apples to apples comparison to plot creation on this new SSD. So let me let that one finish and we can compare it a little bit more. Okay, so my single plot has finished plotting. So let's go ahead and compare that to my parallel plot. So I'm just going to run that same command and grab the first five um, or the last five plots that I plotted. And here we can see that phase one for this individual plot is actually not that much faster than the ones that we run in parallel. And the, the rest of the phases are about similar. You know, it, it beats a little bit on these two, but really not by much. So if we ran three plots in sequential, it would actually take um, about over 15 hours rather than 11 hours. So we're saving, you know, more than four hours by plotting in parallel and even more so if we optimize this. Now the real test is whether or not adding a delay helps with parallel plotting. So now I'm going to do one more test and I'm going to do three more parallel plots, but I'm not going to add any delay whatsoever. So I'm going to do three, do parallel, and I'm going to leave that at zero. So this will tell us whether or not the delay actually really increased our, our plot per hour. So let me go ahead and choose my plot um, plotting folder right here. And then let me choose the final destination, which is going to be on my Seagate. Mr. Pig and farm and I'm going to do create plot so I have three plots and I have zero delay so now my CPU is just going to be hit hard because all three are going to be running starting at the same time using two threads each and I have a max of six threads so I, if I open up task manager I should probably see my CPU pegged at 100% and we in fact do see that so some of my pl plots could actually be being throttled right now because you know I do have other processes running. So let's go ahead and let these run and then we can compare the results to the ones that I added a delay to to see if it actually has a major effect. Okay so my three plots that I started all at the same time have now finished. So now we can compare the times to the plots that I staggered by two hours and 40 minutes. And at first glance it really doesn't seem like it's that bad because whenever we staggered them, remember it took 11 hours altogether to plot three plots. And each one took, well the first one took about five and a half hours, and then the one that whenever all three were plotting took closer to six, or five hours, 0.82. However, the ones that we all started at the same time, you know, they only took about an hour more to plot, and they all finished within less than seven hours. So when we plot them at the same time, we have three plots in less than seven hours where we, when we staggered the, them we had three plots within about 11 hours but the story doesn't end there so like if you look at phase one where I was saying that the CPU would be hit the hardest and this would be the phase that would get the most um, affected it did get affected as you can clearly see and you can see that all phases actually got affected with phase four being the least affected but where it really matters is whenever it's copying the file. So this is just how long it takes to plot the file and then how long it, then it starts to copy the file to the final destination. Now this is where it really hits hard. So whenever you're just doing on one at it or staggered, you know, it only takes about 13 minutes and that's a pretty standard no matter how many you're plotting in parallel as long as they're being copied one at a time. However, whenever we're plotting all at the same time and you're, then you're copying them all at the same time well it takes almost four times as long and it takes almost an hour so this increases the total plot time the total time before you start new plots almost an hour so now it's about seven and a half hours to get three plots now that's still less than three than 11 hours to get the, the other one however we didn't start new plots after the first one finished here like we would uh, in a normal scenario, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. However, I did, you know, extrapolate this out, and you can see, like, within a day, if we do, you know, I chose the, the worst time, so if we go back to PowerShell, I chose the worst time of six hours for the average plot um, for the staggered, with the first one being 578, because that would be accurate, 
and I chose the best time for seven hours and 51 minutes for the ones that we started all at the same time. And then I kind of, ex you know, I, I extended that out with those, those times. And you can see within a day, you're already passing the ones that take, um, that, that you start all at the same time. So here you can see that we get the first plot, you know, at five hours and 47 minutes. And then six hours later, you get another one from that queue and another one at six hours apart. And you can see that um, this one does stay ahead. You know, it gets three plots and then six, and this one's only at five, and then this one's at nine, and then this one's still at eight. But then within the next day, you're at 13, and this one's still at 12. And not only that is like, so this one's at three, but then you get four and five before you get the six. So you're starting to farm those before the other ones finish. And then one last point is, you know, when we started the all three, you saw that my CPU was pegged at 100. Now, CPUs really can, they're, they're able to handle that, but you know, if this is your gaming PC, you don't really want to be pegging it at 100 if you don't have to. And also, you know, we probably could squeeze one more staggered plot in, into here if we wanted to and you have the space to do it since we're not using all six uh, threads at the same time because these different phases, phase three and phase four and phase two, only use one thread. Now if you have cores that are one core and two threads, well then you might want to stick to the number of cores that you have per um, for your plotting. But mine is six cores and six threads, so each uh, core has its own only one thread. Now I will say this, I didn't start another plot after finishing the first plot and the staggering of plots. So if I did, then that plot would have started around the same time that my third stagger plot started, which would have affected the, the timing of the third plot's uh, finish. Now it wouldn't have been a dra as drastic as plotting three at the exact same time, but it would have been affected a little bit. But what you really need to avoid is them copying at the same time. So in my case, they still would have been about 20 minutes apart, and so we would have had enough time to copy one before the next one started copying, and we would have avoided this major, major bottleneck right here. So do you really need to stagger them for the entirety of phase one? Probably not. And depending on how long your total plot time is, um, you really want to try to avoid having them being finished at the same time. So for me, I probably will stagger mine only an hour to maybe a little bit over an hour. And that way, you know, they're not going to be finishing at the same time. Now, I hope this video is helpful. And in the next video, we will be jumping in the command line and I'll be showing you how to do parallel plotting in there, in addition to staggering them and starting a new one as soon as one finishes. So as soon as this one uh, finishes, well, a new one will start so that we always have three parallel plots that are staggered, that are starting and ending at different times so that we don't run into bottlenecks. Now, I believe that you can do this in the GUI. You have a little bit less control, um, but this video kind of demonstrates it. Now, if you want to give this a try, I haven't personally tried it myself, but I do believe that this guy has figured out a way to do it in the GUI, and he does seem to be responding to comments, so if you do have trouble, he might be able to help you if you do decide to try this. Um, I personally like PowerShell and I like jumping in the command line and it gives us more resources to use in the future. So um, in future videos, I will be showing you how you can attach um, getting counters or getting system information to the plotting process like CPU usage and memory for each process and how you can create graphs with them. Now this is just for me to go down a rabbit hole, but it will provide maybe more information that people can use. Now I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye.